Hi everyone, my name is Dorota Szelewa and I am an assistant professor in social justice, University College Dublin. And here I'm representing steering committee of the ECPR standing group on gender and politics. And it is my pleasure to announce the winners of this year's Joni Lobendowski PhD prize in gender and politics. Just a few words about the prize. It is awarded every second year for outstanding PhD dissertation in the field of gender and politics, including gender and or sexuality studies perspectives in political science, international relations, political philosophy, public policy and public administration. So before I mention the two winners, uh, let me just briefly introduce the jury members. Uh, so this year, Petra Meyer from University of Antwerp was our chair. Uh, Eva Anduiza from Universitat Antonoma Barcelona. Orlando Sayo from Newcastle University and Eva Fodor from Central Uni European University and myself were also the jury members. We were actually decided uh, on the basis of several criteria and the criteria included uh, innovation whenever it comes to theory, approach, empirical knowledge, importance of the topic, the impacts also beyond the field of gender and politics research, methodological rigor, but also such criteria as reflexivity, positionality, intersectionality. And uh, taking all of this into account, the jury deliberated and decided uh, to award uh, the two researchers in alphabetical order. Leandra Bias for her doctoral thesis entitled The Impossibility of Feminist Critique in Authoritarianism. Revisiting Western Knowledge Transfer in Russia and Serbia, and Cecilia Josephson for a thesis entitled Adaptive Resistance Power Struggles Over Gender Quotas in Uruguay. Both theses are excellent, innovative, they contribute with new empirical and theoretical knowledge to the study of gender and politics. And I just would like to say something, a, a few words about Leandra Bia's thesis. So Leandra Bias makes a strong empirical and theoretical contribution with her work investigating how feminists under authoritarian regimes position transnational feminism in the context of authoritarian discourses. They attach positive meaning knowledge transfer considered as between equals and strategically reject East-West distinctions between feminisms. Bias demonstrates how solicited and supportive transnational feminist encounters took place in former Yugoslavia and Soviet Russia, highlighting the latter's agency in critiquing and recontextualizing Western feminist ideas. Doing so, her work deconstructs the way in which gender equality has been constructed as a Western idea, has supported specific political projects, and how the marginalization of this discourse by contemporary Serbian and Russian feminists is itself a political act. This reconceptualization of East-West knowledge transfer is innovative, as is the critique of critical theory in authoritarian times. I think that we can still discuss about um, Leandra's thesis and there are many other very interesting points and there has been a huge work done also in terms of her empirical work. He, she collected really new empirical knowledge that critically contributes to the study of feminisms, especially in the East-West uh, um, uh, exchange and of ideas and knowledge. Uh, but I think that right now maybe um, we will give the floor to Gwendolyn Sasa, who was the supervisor of uh, Leandra's thesis. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Hello, everyone. I'm extremely happy about the news that Leandra has won the 2023 ECPR Johnny Lovendowski Prize. My name is Gwendolyn Sasse, and I'm, of course, completely biased as I'm one of Leandra's doctoral supervisors. At the time, I was a professor in the Department of Politics and International Relations at the University of Oxford, where Leandra did her PhD. And the second supervisor there was Elizabeth Fraser from the same department. And by now I'm based at Humboldt University in Berlin and I run an independent research institute, the Center for East European and International Studies in Berlin. I already knew uh, back in Oxford that Leandra's approach and findings were truly innovative and the prize, I think, is now the public acknowledgement of this achievement. In her thesis, Leandra does something special and also courageous. 
She combines a critical feminist perspective with empirical research in two authoritarian settings in Russia and Serbia. And as you can all imagine, it is very difficult to conduct this kind of research in authoritarian systems. And I think it's fair to say that you, Leandra, had to uh, realize along the way how theory and reality can be quite different things and they can clash. And the choice you then made was to readjust the focus of the thesis, I think also to leave a certain comfort zone and ultimately challenge yourself, challenge feminist scholarship and also the study of Eastern Europe and authoritarianism. Clearly, the choice has paid off and um, it was worth the effort and also the agony you experienced along the way. And I think uh, probably feelings of happiness prevail now, but I think it's worth remembering that the path was not always an easy one. And that has a lot to do with the topic you chose and the approach you chose. But I've always um, valued that you stuck to it or better, you took the initiative, you stayed true to yourself and to the empirical material. And you used the empirical evidence to formulate your own effective critique of the critique, as you put it, by listening more closely to the feminist voices in the two countries you focus on. And the thesis very effectively shows that the critique of unilateral West-East knowledge transfer and that pinning processes of othering of the East is not quite what your interview partners thought and talked about or what they thought was most important. So in a nutshell, Leandra's thesis is conceptually and empirically innovative. It is not afraid to take on established wisdoms and critical theory. It presents, which I think is very important, ethically sound research, and it advances the field by speaking to different academic communities at once, critical feminist theory and the study of authoritarianism being the two most obvious ones. And Leandra, which I really like a lot, has also brought her own voice into the thesis, so it shimmers through her academic writing style, and that's really not always the case. And what impresses me most, in addition to your critical and lively mind, Leandra, is your kindness, your warmth, your collegiality, your ability to have a good laugh, and your passion for making a difference. So dear Leandra, it has been a really an honor and a privilege to accompany you along your path for a little while. And I've learned a lot from you, and I can't wait to see how your current and future projects will evolve. I hope your thesis in book form will find many readers in and beyond academia. So congratulations on this prize. Thank you both Dorota and Gwen for these really beautiful words. And I think when, when you ask me what the prize meant or what my response was is I read it and I, I started crying. And it is really, I was very moved because it's a combination of incredible joy, of course, pride, validation, but also, yeah, there was, it felt like a catharsis. And I think that's, um, that's precisely because of the many reasons you've already mentioned when to have such a jury like the ECPR, um, Yoni Lomondusky jury validated is incredible. And it's also to say, I think precisely because the process was so harsh also put me into the position where I decided to quit academia for a while. I really thought it was not my place to be. And um, so for two years, I was more in the in the policy world, still very much with a focus on on feminism. But with the full scale invasion of Russia, um, that was one of the main reasons why I realized maybe I do have something to say. Maybe there is a thesis sitting on my shelf that, of course, was not conducted since the full scale invasion, but does shed light on important aspects on authoritarianism and now also militarism that usually otherwise get forgotten. So I sort of took the courage to go back. I'm now very happy to have an excellent position at the University of Bern, but I think this prize was then also maybe another confirmation that yes, this is one of the ways I can make a meaningful contribution in the times where I felt yeah often often overwhelmed with, with the news. And so, that, that is really how it happened when I got the email and read the jury statement. I had just minutes before been reading the news about the, the break of the Kakov, Kakovka Dam. Of course, as researchers who deeply care about these contexts and the people, it is about, I think, confronting yourself each time. What can I do? What can I meaningfully do? And a part of this has been, as Gwen mentioned, to translate the academic knowledge to a wider public, to combat misinformation 
but yeah, also to decide because that was really a, a juncture in my life last last year with the outbreak of the full scale invasion. I had for a moment considered com going completely into humanitarian aid. I already had the prospect of collecting evidence of sexualized violence on the ground, but I decided probably I am better equipped to contribute with academic knowledge. So that was the decision, that was the juncture. And so I think, yeah, as I said, to have the validation in a, in a way of the ECPR jury that, yeah, what I'm doing has value means incredibly a lot at this moment in time. I've gone back to academia. I'm very happy to say that the full manuscript is currently under review, which is, um, of course, amazing, but it's also a vulnerable position to be in because the doubts creep up again. And now yet other people are going to read this work, but that's why the, the price has also meant a lot at this particular moment. I have done follow up interviews right after the full scale invasion with some of the interview partners. First to regain consent, because I want to make sure that that is fine if and when the book comes out but also to better understand how this new environment influences their sense of agency and strategies now. And then I'm following two larger projects at the Institute of Political Science at the University of Bern. The first one shifts level from feminist civil society to the regime, looking at when the official discourse started using the narratives of traditional values that need to be defended as an excuse to justify aggression. And I do that through analysis of Putin's speeches. And the second project is a larger Horizon Europe project where I am the co-principal investigator for Switzerland. And so there we look at how um, right-wing populist parties employ anti-gender as a mobilization strategy and what kind of gender equality policies could actually regain a part of that electorate. And I think that's nice because it's something that the jury already saw also, also in my thesis that what I'm looking at is not a phenomenon that is limited to Russia or Serbia, but that this kind of backlash, let's call it, is, um, is larger, is wider and is happening also in, in Europe. So lots of, um, at the same time, of course, disheartening, but also really important topics. So. Thank you all very, very much. And this is, I think, the important point where I should be thanking a number of people. First of all, I do want to also congratulate the joint winners, Cecilia. It's an honor to have this award together with you. And I want to thank, first and foremost, of course, my co-supervisors, and especially Gwen, who has been with me, it is fair to say, ever since my MPhil in Russian East European Studies at Oxford, and I think without whom I would not have even considered because there's always a, um, a role modeling involved. So thank you for, for having been there and encouraged me in so many ways. And it's nice to stay connected beyond. I think the second biggest thank you has to definitely go to my partner who, when it was an agony, was there to pick me up. And then of course, family, but also colleagues who've been incredible men mentors. I want to specifically thank the Working Group on Southeast Europe and Interpretivism from the British International Studies Association. These were the peers that actually, when I was doubting my approach, were really pushing me and validating. And then some Oxford colleagues that maybe some who will watch this video will know. Marian Jimenez from my cohort, Adelie Chevé and Teresa Büchsel. And of course, the over 60 interview partners in Russia and Serbia under, as you also touched upon, Gwen, sometimes difficult circumstances, sensitive moments, well, trusted me with their perspective. And I couldn't have done any of that without them. So thank you all. So the second winner is Cecilia Josephson for her thesis entitled Adaptive Resistance Power Struggles Over Gender Equalities in Uruguay. So just to say a few words about Cecilia's thesis, her adaptive resistance stage model is studying the case of Uruguay, and it is a very strong and super original contribution. The theoretical justification of the choice of the case of Uruguay is really excellent, 
The use of time and within country variation is extremely elegant. Cecilia's research approach is extremely interesting and excellent methodologically, and her contribution to capture resistance is very unique. The idea of studying policy failure and the agency of those who resist progressive change is refreshing and sheds a new light on political processes. It improves our understanding of which actors resist and the strategies they deploy, defining resistance as an action that is different from institutional constraints. Both the theorization of a model of resistance to gender equality measures and empirical study is hugely welcome contribution to the field of gender and politics in general. Her work can travel to other situations of resistance to power and to the resistance that is organized by marginalized social groups. It opens up new pathways for future study, but also provides a blueprint for applications to policy processes and policy making. Finally, Josephson's thesis conclusions provide strategic information on the conditions for successful feminist action and politics. My name is Per Setterberg, and I'm a senior lecturer at the Department of Government at Uppsala University in Sweden. And I was Cecilia's main supervisor uh, during her dissertation writing. And I strongly recommended the head of the department to nominate Cecilia because I think she wrote an outstanding PhD dissertation that is excellent at so many different levels. First, she presents a really fascinating empirical puzzle. How and why did the country Uruguay, that has been progressive in many other respects, such as abortion policy, take so long to adopt and implement the gender quota policy? While uh, pretty much the rest of the countries in Latin America adopted quotas uh, during a short period of time in the late 1990s, it took much longer for Uruguay. And why was that case when the general public was in favor of the quotas and also uh, Uruguay was a front runner in gender equality policy? So Cecilia Josephson's dissertation is excellent also in a second way, its empirical richness. It contributes with a nuanced step-by-step -step description of the three-decade gender quota reform process in Uruguay. And by zooming in on the key actors, in particular those who stood to lose uh, their privilege due to the progressive policy change, the dissertation shows that the Uruguayan quota failure is the result of strategic and idea-based resistance Im among male-dominated political elites. And in, an important methodological contribution that she makes in the dissertation is the novel way in which she captures resistance to gender quotas empirically. She outlines in, in detail how to unveil different forms of resistance acted upon at different phases of the reform process. Thus, she provides researchers with concrete strategies for discovering things that normally remain hidden. Last but not least, the dissertation is excellent for its theoretical contribution. As her supervisor, I'm so proud of what she did theoretically in the dissertation because it wasn't easy and she did struggle a lot before she nailed it. Cecilia's dissertation draws our attention to the people involved in the power struggles for gender equality reforms, the change agents and the status quo defenders, and the ag their agency and room for maneuver. Her main theoretical contribution concerned how to theorize the role of resistance among privileged political elites throughout the reform process. In the dissertation, she develops an original th theoretical model of resistance, the resistance stage model, that emphasizes the adaptive nature of resistance and how resisting actors are both empowered and circumscribed by their ideational and institutional environments. Mapped onto the policy process, the model outlines how status quo defenders adapt their resistance strategies to accommodate institutional and ideational changes across the phases of gender setting, policy formulation, decision making and implementation. By developing her theoretical model, Cecilia's dissertation not only advances knowledge about quota reform in Uruguay, but it creates a template that can be used by researchers to reveal resistance to progressive reform in virtually any democratic polity. And that is so impressive, and I'm so happy for her. She's an amazing scholar who has the rare ability of combining original and rigorous research, 
with theoretical innovation? First of all, I just want to say that I'm extremely happy for having won this prize. Um, I am humble, overwhelmed, and I feel very honored. And I would like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to all the people who have encouraged me both to start and to finish writing this thesis. Um, to the people in Uppsala who, during my undergraduate studies, encouraged me to apply to the PhD program, something which I don't think I would have done on my own, thinking that research was not really for people like me. And I'm also really grateful to my supervisors, Per Setteberg and Lee Benik Björkman, who always believed in this project and my ability to finish it, uh, even at times when I had serious doubts myself uh, that uh, something interesting would uh, come out of this. I am also deeply grateful for, to all the people in Uruguay who have helped me along the way. And in particular, my research participants who very generously share their time and knowledge with me and help me as a true outsider uh, to understand this power, power struggle over gender quotas. And finally, I want to thank the jury for taking their time to read my thesis and for all their encouragement and kind words. It really, really, really means a lot. Uh, so thank you. I want to say a few words uh, about the process also about writing this thesis. Um, it took me more than nine years to finish it. And during this time, I've had two kids. I worked in the Swedish parliament for a year, and I've also been engaged in multiple other projects. And during this time, I've seriously doubted that I would ever finish this thing. And I think I'm still surprised that I actually did. Uh, I went to Uruguay for the first time in 2013, thinking that the quota law that they adopted in 2009 would have a profound impact on the number of women elected to parliament in 2014, when the law was going to be uh, implemented for the first time. And from all I knew about gender quotas at that point in time, uh, the law looked really strong on paper. It had placement mandates and strong sanctions for non-compliance. And this in the context of a closed list proportional electoral system. So I went to Uruguay thinking that I would explore how such a strong quota law would change the Uruguayan political system, the representation of women and the working conditions for women politicians. Yet coming there, I quite quickly realized that such dramatic overnight changes that I had envisioned would never materialize. And what I instead found was this profound and strategic resistance, both to quotas, but also to women's political inclusion in general, even among the male politicians who had been part of voting for this law, and at times also enthusiastically, seemingly enthusiastically defended the law in, in speeches in the parliament. And I kept coming back to Uruguay and what I saw sort of supported me in my thoughts to, to focus on resistance and how such resistance is acted out and adapted, both across the policy process, but also across political parties. So I found that the gender quota had failed to be adopted for a long period of time in this country. And later on, when they finally adopted a quota law, uh, failed to be effective not because the proponents of such changes had not done everything right. They collaborated across party lines, they worked with organizations in civil society and international organizations to, to gain leverage, etc. So it wasn't their fault uh, and they should not be blamed. Instead, in this power struggle uh, over change, these women change agents met powerful contenders who acted strategically to defend this male-dominated status quo. So describing this power struggle over gender equitable, equitable change felt really important to me and something that I hadn't seen uh, being done before. Now I work as an associate professor in the Department of Government in Uppsala, my home university. I haven't moved a single bit uh, from my undergraduate studies until now. And I work on hopefully publishing 
uh, soon a rewritten version of this thesis as a book. And in my other projects, I try to describe the level of gender equality in Swedish politics uh, and thinking about how it can be improved. And this is work that has been ongoing since I worked in the parliament in 2014 and work that I carry out together with my colleague, uh, Josefina Eriksson. And as part of this work, I'm looking forward to go to the ECPR General Conference to present work on radical right parties and how they adapt, but also challenge norms around gender equality in main mainstream political parties. And in another project, Pat and I, together with uh, Amanda Clayton, explore challenges and opportunities for women's representation in sub-Saharan Africa, in particular in the aftermath of COVID-19. Uh, which was a crisis that, to a very large extent, put issues that women prioritize, such as healthcare and poverty, on top of the political agenda um, in this region of the world. So these are some of the things I work on, besides thinking more about resistance to gender equality. And I want to end with saying, again, a very big thank you uh, to everyone who has helped me along the way. So thank you everyone and once again congratulations to the two winners.